Oh, this is something fun. So, uh, all right. I don't have all the details worked out, but I was thinking of making a hydraulic cylinder. No, not a hyd. Well, you could call it a hydraulic cylinder. And so it would be like this, this this. And it's nice and long for a long bore stroke. And then it open like this. And then like that. And then it come out. And then we've got like our output. And you have string or wire attached to here. Right? And then this can, for example, say this were strapped to a bone. Alright. Here is another bone. Okay. Okay. And it's strapped in right here, tied in real good. Maybe Maybe it's um, diverted so it doesn't rip the bone off or whatever. So we got multiple strings tying it to the bone. All right. So that's our sh our shaft, and th this is going to act like a muscle. So it's going to pull this way in order to make the bone bend, right? Now, my idea for explosive power. is to insert here um, gunpowder or gasoline or um, hairspray or some other combustible gas, powder, fluid, whatever it is. Squirt a little bit of that here and then you have a spark plug inside here that creates a spark. The spark is created and the combustion in this chamber places tremendous explosive power forcing this piston back. And so that would lift this with tremendous force. It could it could be some crazy amount of force. You say gunpowder might be too powerful, but what if I only put okay, so let's say adding the amount of gun power of a small firecracker. So let's say this is this is a small firecracker, just like that amount filled, right? But let's say um, I only put one twentieth of that. You know, a little a little cluster of powder that big. You know, the size of the tip of my pen. You just pour in a tiny little poof. You pour that in. And so depending on how much gunpowder, or like I said, it could be gunpowder, it could be gasoline, it could be hairspray, it could be, it could be, um, I don't even know, I don't know all the things it could be, but something that's combustible. And that can create an explosion force driving this piston called a piston, driving the piston that way and actuating the muscle. So what I was thinking is like, these are like my secret weapon. Obviously I'm still going to control the muscles by servo motors or DC motors, but this would be something I could use when I need more oomph than the 
servo motors can muster. So let's say the robot's sitting, and my servo motors are strong enough in the thighs in order to have the robot walk and balance. But in order for him to get from sitting to standing, he doesn't quite have enough strength. And if you think about like your grandpa, like my grandpa could, can hobble around, but he just can't stand up on his own. That takes a lot more strength than walking. Standing takes a, a burst of, of strength. That's why people put their hands on the sides of their chairs and push with their arms in addition to using their legs because it takes way more strength to stand than it does to stay standing. Once you're standing, most of your weight is just being held up by your bones, not by your muscles. Your muscles are just used to balance. So the best way to get the extra explosive force that your servo motors just can't muster, you don't have enough amps of power, you don't have enough batteries, you don't have enough servos, you just can't quite do it, then using a combustion chamber in a hydraulic cylinder, custom design, could be used for the extra explosive force. And you can control the severity of the combustion by controlling how much uh, ign ignition fluid you put in there, how much gunpowder you add. If you add a tiny amount, it could be enough just to give a little explosive push. So once, so this is what would happen. All the servos are straining at the muscle. They're straining, and they're not quite enough. They can't do a bicep curl of that weight. And so a little bit of gunpowder is added to the combustion cylinder, and it's ignited, and it gives it that oof, that oof. And then once you get it moving, now it's a lot easier. Have you ever been doing bicep or uh, bench press, and you had a spotter? And you're like this, ah, and you're struggling, right? And the spotter just puts their finger and gives a little, a little push. And that's enough, and then you're fine. You can keep going. Sometimes once you hit your maximum, your maximum struggle, you can't move anymore. And all it takes is a little push. Once you get some momentum, then it gets easy. And so this would just be a momentum stimulator. It would just give your muscle that extra oomph to get it started like a spotter and then the servos would handle the rest. So this wouldn't be necessary to cause the entire arm to lift under control or control the speed or anything else. It would just be a secret weapon to give that, uh, that, that extra explosion when the servos are struggling at their maximum capacity. It wouldn't even have to be that big because it'd just be so powerful because it's harnessing the power of an explosion rather than harnessing the power of a battery or electric or anything else. It's just a little explosion. And I could control how much, how big the explosion is and, and how powerful it is and how fast it's going. I can control all that just by the size of the cylinder and the amount of fuel I add. It's like an experiment, which would be really fun to make one of these cylinders and then experiment with it. It'd be super cool. Like I could experiment with it outside of the robot. The only problem I was thinking is like if I use gasoline, when it explodes, it lets off like bad stuff. You don't want to breathe that. So if the robot's like exploding once every ten minutes. He's going to be, I guess, breathing that out his nose. Um, that might be bad for me to be breathing in if he's in the same room as me. So, I don't know if I need a filter system or. I mean, like, I don't think gunpowder is bad. If somebody shoots bullets in a room, you don't get poisoned from breathing in the gunpowder exhaust, right? And I can get gunpowder from bullets. You can legally buy bullets even without a firearm permit. I can just buy bullets and empty out the gunpowder for the robot. 
I, you can use hairspray, but I feel like over time that sticky glue would like mess up everything. So I feel like I want something cleaner than hairspray. I could use gasoline or I could use um, gunpowder, something that's going to explode cleanly. Or maybe I could use like, uh, actually I don't know what else explodes. I'm not a master of explosions. <laughs> I mean, I guess the whole thing could just work that way all the time, but I was just thinking of using this as like a rare tool. When the robot's not quite strong enough to do something, it, it, could, it could use this as like a secret weapon. Not like for all the time use. Because that's going to generate a lot of heat as well. That's another problem. This cylinder is going to get fiery hot from one explosion. So I, I wouldn't do multiple. It would just be a one-time deal. I feel like that could, that could be the difference between success and failure of my robot. This would be a way just to have a lightweight, small tube. This could be half-inch copper pipe. Just a small thing that gives extra explosive force when needed. Yep. Hmm. So the explosions, yeah, that's going to be complicated. Um, yikes. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> very complicated guys very complicated because you got to design a way for the exhaust to be released out of here and uh, you got to make it safe yeah that would be something I'd add way later I don't know it's definitely very cool though a lot of potential there Especially if you ever want the robot to jump or to be able to like punch through a wall. It would be through something like this. Explosion powered cylinders. That's the future. You'll see it. I bet you that's going to be in robots of the future. If you ever get like real life Terminator type robots, it's going to be through that. I'm calling it. I came up with this design and it's going to be a thing. So I, I probably should further develop it create a prototype at least I, I definitely would want to play with that for sure what kind of exhaust I mean um it would need to be a metal exhaust wouldn't it maybe Metal tubing of some sort. Hmm. What kind of exhaust is right? I'm picturing metal tubing. Where would it be acceptable for that metal tubing to exhaust out of the robot's body? I mean, that's just going to be so hot. The robot's made of plastic and epoxy I mean it's like a plastic robot where is it acceptable to send explosive red hot exhaust gas I feel like if you blow that gas into water like a container full of water that could cool it very quickly Maybe um, blow it into a winding, a winding, what if the tubing, what if you wrapped tubing, winding, and you had this all in a container, right, full of water, and tubing came out and so 
the air would come in and come out. And the, the water would like be boiling. And you could have um, another tube just releasing the, the boiling water vapor, which would be a lot easier to handle. And then this air would be cold and it would be hot here. So this would actually cool all of it. This could even be ice water. Because we've already discussed the ice cube system, so the, the robot could make sure some ice cubes are in this water. Or this is um, ice water from its ice water system. And that could cool the exhaust. Because, I mean, we're not talking about, you know, six cylinders that are car cylinders with these huge exhaust pipes. We're talking about very tiny cylinders, like the size of a double-A battery. Very tiny explosion. So this could be enough to cool off that enough to where it could then merge with the ventilation system of the rest of the robot. The normal ventilation system. And I don't think it would be hot enough then to melt the ventilation tubes. Especially if it's just a single burst of hot stuff. It's, it's going to go through this water, boil off, and then it could re-enter this plastic tubing. I think that, that it would be okay then to re-enter the normal exhaust so it would still come out through the nose of the robot. So that's all we'd need. So I solved it. So this would be the exhaust um, conversion from super hot explos explosion exhaust and a cooled exhaust by sending a coil of it for maximum surface area of releasing all that heat into ice water and then it'd be safe to re-enter into the normal tubing of the normal ventilation system of the robot and breathe out through the nose the next time the robot's breathing out. I think that would be just fine. So that's what we'll do. The exhaust would be inspired by the anus. I mean, the exhaust for these explosions could come out through the anus. That actually might not be a bad idea. A separate exhaust port through the anus of the robot for any type of explosions. The explosions would be less frequent because they'd only be when the robot needs extra oomph. So like the robot's trying to stand up. So we've been picturing this the whole time as being the arm. Well, imagine it's the leg and he's trying to do a, a hamstring curl. This is his shin and this is his thigh. Um, the explosion happens and the vent, the vent gas comes out. Like let's say, okay, we're getting a little more detailed now. That's a good thing. All right, so here's, the, I drew with dotted lines, um, the cylinder, or no, the piston head. All right, the exhaust hole could be here. All right. And so all this would be compressed air until the piston head gets to here. at which point this compressed gas has a escape route through this exhaust pipe and that exhaust pipe would then come up through here wind and wind and wind through ice water and then come out cool now this cool water would enter a main exhaust line which can come out through the anus of the robot so his normal exhaust tubes which come out through the nostrils would not be compromised they wouldn't need to be metal but you could have a separate metal exhaust coming out the anus that blows out substantially hot air. Much hotter than the normal air he breathes out through his nose. And that would be just the air being exhausted from these explosion cylinders that I only use when the robot needs that extra oomph of strength. And it would be cooled by the ice water so it wouldn't be blowing out the butthole so hot that it melts the butt cheeks literally or it starts its pants on fire we wouldn't want you know actual flames spraying out of its butthole that start the cherry sitting in on fire so we would want it to be cooled before it gets to the butthole but it could be pretty hot before it because it's not going to be sustained. It's just going to be a single burst of very hot air. 
and I think that that's okay. And that's the perfect place to let it out. Because if you're letting that hot of air coming out the nose, that's going to risk melting the nose, or at least really heating up the pipe, the piping near the nose, which you don't want that to be really hot, because that's where the cool air intake is going to be as well. So for the really hot air exhaust, that could be through the butthole. Now, I actually like the smell of gunpowder, so using gunpowder I think would be pretty cool. My room would smell like firecrackers. But it only smell like firecrackers when the robot is heavily exerting itself. And I could put a cooldown in the software to make sure the robot does not try to do this too often. So if one explosion isn't enough, he, he might have like a one minute cooldown where he can't use another explosion force to try to get the extra oomph. So yeah, I think I think this system would work.